We do want to get more reaction, though, on this developing uh, story, and we'll, we'll reach Rachel Notley to do that. She's the leader of Alberta's NDP. She's also in Calgary. Ms. Notley, good to see you. Thanks for making the time. Good to see you, or hear your voice anyway. Yeah, <laughs> glad to be here. I'll just pick up where my colleague Julia left off, because that caucus is still going on. I actually thought it would already have ended when we interviewed you, and we could say, hey, what's your reaction to who is the new interim leader. Do you think, I mean, there's all this back and forth about whether or not uh, Premier Kenny can stay on in the interim until a new leader is chosen. Do you think that is possible? What, what do you think of that scenario? Well, you know, I think there's a whole bunch, a range of scenarios that are possible. I think that uh, they all ultimately, however, contribute to a similar outcome. The bottom line is, you know, listen, uh, uh, I'll be generous and say as of January of this year, although I would argue it actually preceded it some time before that. Uh, but, you know, the 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 uh, premier let go most of his senior staff in the premier's office. Uh, people who I know from experience are critical to making sure that government does what government needs to do. And, and they got released to go work on his leadership campaign. So we have had a, an absentee a government, an absentee premier's office uh, since January because of this internal squabbling within the UCP. And now what we learned today is that that is going to continue uh, for another several months. And, and so regardless of who's an interim leader, not an interim leader, I mean, there is a, a, a caretaker situation that they are in now. And that falls on the heels of many, many months of them effectively being in a caretaker position. And and meanwhile, Albertans don't have anybody uh, focusing on the kinds of challenges we're facing in healthcare with affordability, those kinds of things. Um, so, you know, this is interesting for some folks to watch, but for the Albertans who really want their government to show up for work, it's just kind of becoming frustrating. To 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 uh, can you be more specific, I guess, about to, to to what detriment? Because I'm thinking, for example, of announcements that the government has made and, and the premier in his capacity as premier around affordability with the uh, with the gas tax rebate. Uh, I mean, they did come out with a budget that ended up being balanced. It doesn't look like the economy is in doing nearly as bad as it was, let's say, a year or, or two ago. If they are in caretaker mode, have they been taking care of things? And is it really uh, uh, to the detriment or to the degree of of uh, negative outcomes that you're that you're saying? Well, actually, I mean, what we've seen is a, is a, on the affordability issues, we've seen a tremendous amount of sloppiness. They announced, well, they first announced that there wouldn't be a rebate. Then they announced there would be a rebate. And then when you read the budget, it turned out that the rebate was only triggered uh, if if uh, gas prices hit a level that the budget itself didn't expect would ever happen. And those rebates don't come into effect till next fall, yet people are overwhelmed with costs right now. Then, because they were so embarrassed by that, they promised an electricity rebate, but which is a simple cutting of a check. And and they still haven't been able to make that happen. And they ultimately release regulations that suggest they're giving themselves till the end of December to get that out the door. None of that looks like a government that's firing on all cylinders. Moreover, we have a serious crisis in healthcare, And I understand that that's happening all across the country. Mm -hmm. But in other provinces, the governments are seriously focused on it. This government is focused on gaslighting Albertans and trying to pretend that, that uh, uh, children lining up outside of an emergency room in the children's hospital just to get triaged uh, is somehow the normal course of business. So there are, I, I could go on, but trust me, there are many, many ways in which these folks are simply not doing the work that the people of this province elected them to do. Just quickly before, I, I do want to get more of your reaction on the situation in Alberta. I mean, on the health care issue, I know premiers have been asking the federal government for more money from health care transfers now for months. Uh, that wasn't part of the deal that your federal counterparts made when they made an agreement to keep Justin Trudeau in power for a number of years. It's not like they stipulated that money had to go uh, towards provinces. But I'll, I'll put that aside for a second. Uh, I remember reading all this commentary, and I know uh, I know you did too. I'm sure about how you must be the most the happiest opposition leader in the country uh, in the lead up to this this leadership review. Uh, do you think your electoral uh, chances, your electoral fortunes, are diminished by the fact that, uh, as Premier Kenny put it last night, the, that party now has a chance to clear the air? Um, you know, I honestly don't think that this has really had much of an impact. Uh, at a certain point into the UCP tenure, Albertans slowly started to discover that these folks uh, were not terribly functional as a government, that they spent far too much time arguing with each other and nowhere near enough time for, uh, getting the job done. And, 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 you know, we saw that play out in their, in their, 
nation leading failures with respect to managing COVID, uh, but COVID didn't cause the problem. It was their inability to make decisions and to, and to govern that actually caused the problem. Um, so that's been going on for a long time and all this drama, everything leading up to yesterday and now everything going forward. Um, it's just at this point for us, it's kind of noise. And we've long since sort of decided decided to just push through that and start talking to Albertans directly about what their priorities are and start talking to them uh, also more propositionally than oppositions typically do about what we would do differently. And, and so um, we're going to continue doing that. And I don't think, therefore, that what's going on right now is going to play a big, uh, a big uh, role. I think that Albertans are sort of at a critical point here where they're kind of done with this. Okay, Ms. Notley, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you very much for making the time for us tonight. Appreciate it. Thank you. Rachel Notley is the leader of Alberta's NDP. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.